the plan for today is really we can draw those passing lanes between these players and naturally they create these zones for themselves and so the worst position for that defender to be we can see is the intersection of those zones and so that's really the key for the attacking players how can i position myself a so that that defender is stuck between me and the guy on the ball and b how do i keep that angle or make my run to keep the angle between me and the guy on the ball wide a lot of spain's tiki taka football from the world cup in 2010 barcelona's tactics it follows the exact same pattern how do we evaluate team performance as opposed to the individual performances we were just looking at we already saw in that last part, the connection between players is essentially the passing between each player. That's how players interact on a field. If all your attacks are coming through the center, and I know they're all coming through the center, it's easy for me to defend. In contrast, if we were to pull up charts for Germany or Spain during that same Euro period, every single attacking player almost had some kind of significant contribution. It was more evenly spread out, what we would call less central. And so that kind of leads us to our first property, Right, if you want to call it our first stat that comes from these networks, we call it centrality. It's a reflection of how the build-up play is distributed between players. Now let's take this and let's go back to that Real Madrid analysis using these concepts. Minute 55-65, Barcelona had low centrality, highest passing rates, most effective period of the game for them. Real Madrid, they did have that period between 5 minutes and 15 minutes where they had low centrality, kind of going through the wings. But for the rest of the game, it was typically very high centrality.